Hope you guys are having a great week so far. What is good with the family? Everybody hop on in here. Let's chop it up. I hope you guys have um, subscribed to my YouTube channel and checked out my latest broadcast from yesterday. We had a very good, deep discussion. That's Tariq Radio. Everybody needs to go to YouTube and check out Tariq Radio. That is my channel. If you have not subscribed to my channel already, be sure to subscribe and then hit that bell notification so that you will be notified whenever I go live, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a lot of folks coming in the room. Much respect to you guys. Everybody's falling on through. That's great. That is great. Glad to have y'all here. Um, don't forget to get the book, Foundation of Black American Race Bader. Very good book. That's my latest book. Real good game in that book. A few things we got to touch on. Right now, man, we have to touch on this narrative. Have y'all noticed that there's this narrative that's going into overdrive right now to attach Latinos to black foundational black American hip hop culture and not just hip hop culture, just black culture in general. There's just been this fever pitch effort by the dominant society to attach Latinos to all of our cultures. Everything we do, they're, they're doubling down on the black and brown. And this is coming from the top, family. I'm telling you, this is coming from the top. They were talking about, we're not talking about, they're doing, they're actually getting a Latino section in the African American History Museum. Okay? that Your antenna should have been up on that one. You go get your own Latino American Museum. How about that? But they're making it a point to put a section for Latino history in the Black History Museum. Now we keep hearing this narrative from people signed to major labels, particularly coming from Fat Joe and um, Buster Rhymes, this whole repeated narrative that Latinos contributed to hip hop, Latinos and blacks created hip hop. They, it's a lie that they, they know it's a lie. Let's be very clear. They know this is a lie, but they keep repeating it. And you know they know it's a lie because whenever somebody or a group keeps repeating the same thing over and over again with no proof, anytime people say, hey, where's the proof of this? We have proof that that is not true. They just keep saying it. They're going to use the old Nazi strategy. Just keep on saying it. Keep telling a lie. And if you keep telling it long enough, eventually it will become the truth. So why are they so hell bent on telling this lie? And the lie is twofold. Either, number one, the lie is it was black and Puerto Ricans who created hip hop, or it was black people who got hip hop from Jamaicans. It was foundational black Americans who got hip hop from Jamaicans. Those are the two main lies that they like to spew. Now, some people say, well, it's just music. What does that matter? This is very significant family. This is not trivial. And they're putting a lot of effort into spreading these lies. Why? It's very important that we understand this is a form of ethnocide. Ethnocide is when the dominant society starts to erase the culture of a subgroup. When you start erasing their culture, this justifies erasing them physically. You see, when you start attacking their culture and their contributions, you start rewriting history. This is what they're doing now. They're in the process of rewriting history. And it's up to us, foundational Black Americans, on the grassroots, to stop that narrative and combat that narrative. They keep coming up with this narrative that it was Puerto Ricans and Blacks and it was Caribbeans who gave us the culture. That is to erase the culture of foundation of Black Americans. See, whenever it comes to our culture, it has to be shared or erased. They can never really give us props on the positive things that we create. And that's something that we have to stop people from doing. 
when they create something, we don't get to latch on and take credit for it. They make sure that they X us out of any credit that's going to be given for their achievements. You understand? But anytime we create something constructive or something that was beneficial financially or culturally, we have to water it down by attributing every little person and giving them props. So with the whole thing now with the Latino and hip hop thing, they've lowered the standards so damn far. Basically, if you were a Puerto Rican in the 1970s and you walk next to a black person who rapped, they're saying that you're a contributor to hip hop. I mean, literally, the bar is that low. They're pointing out a Puerto Rican who just happened to be at a party somewhere. Well, he's a pioneer. They're calling people pioneers who just happened to be somewhere where black folks was doing hip hop. This is how low they've set the bar. That's very dangerous, guys. This is colonization. This is not trivial. This is something that's very serious. Because other groups don't let us come in and rape and then pillage and then take their culture. They don't let it happen. And we shouldn't let it happen. And the thing is, so many black people in the music industry, especially hip hoppers, they're afraid to say something because especially a lot of the old school people, many of them, they still make their little money today by promoting the universality of hip hop. Well, hip hop is for everybody. Because when they go overseas or when they go to hip hop conventions, it's usually a lot of non-black people there. Let's keep it a buck. At these break dance conventions and b-boy conventions and stuff like that, these are usually people who are not black. So they don't really want to offend them. They have to all lives matter hip hop in order to make a buck for themselves. And the dominant society knows this. <clears throat> Excuse me. The dominant society, they're aware of this. So a lot of these people who know the truth, these black folks who's in the music industry or who um, go on these old school tours or whatever, they don't want to mess their little money up by telling the truth. No, you better tell the truth or they're going to erase your damn culture. This is why the documentary, man, I'm going to start filming this documentary possibly Hopefully, I'll start at the end of next month, the beginning of October. We're going to get started on that ASAP. We're almost done with this movie, American Maroon. I am prioritizing that next movie. It's very important for us to get this history straight because this is ethnocide. You know, they all already do all of this stuff with all of our other cultures. They try to erase us from it. We got to stop that stuff. Now, let me play something. Now, BET. Now, and as we know, BET is not black owned. Let's be very clear. Now, BET put up some stuff. They put up a tweet. And I think on the award show this year, they're going to do the whole Latinos and hip hop thing. So now the, the white supremacists from the top, they got their plantation flunkies at BET to push this bogus narrative. Now, let me let y'all hear the video BET put up. If you haven't heard it, talking about Latinos and their contribution to hip hop. This is from BET. They put this up today. Hold on. The Latin community has been a part of hip hop since the very beginning. From backspins on linoleum. Okay, did y'all hear that? How's this? If you can hear the sound, y'all give me a thumbs up. I'm gonna play this slow so I can just start debunking all the damn lies. Could y'all hear that, guys? If you can hear that, give me a hand clap, give me a black fist. Just let me know if you can hear it good. Lioness, thank you, babe. So they were like, the Latino community has been a part of hip hop since the very beginning. That's lie number one. That ain't true. That's not true. They were not a part of hip hop in the very beginning at all. If so, who? Who were they? Because if we're going to give hip hop a timeline, they gave it a timeline, 1973, 74. Latinos were not a part of it at all then. They were not b-boying. They were not DJing. They were not MCing. In fact, they were hating on it. So that's lie number one. Hold on. Latin community has been a part of hip hop since the very beginning. From backspins on linoleum to plugging up the street lights for park jams. The trajectory of Latin and hip hop moved from the corners of the Bronx to every corner of the globe. In the early days of hip hop, Latin culture was present. Folks like DJ Charlie Chase. 
All right. So they said folks like DJ Charlie Chase. Okay. He just happened to be Grandmaster Kaz's DJ. All right. And no disrespect to Charlie Chase. He, he's not a pioneer. Didn't really create anything. He just was one of the few. And he even said that it was Puerto Ricans hating on him for ha hanging with the blacks. So Latino culture don't get a, you don't get credit for creating something that you were hating on. He was an anomaly. He was just, he just happened to be a Puerto Rican dude who hung with Grandmaster Kaz and Puerto Ricans hated on him for it. He said this in many interviews and so did Grandmaster Kaz. You see, we got to get these lies straight, man. Hold on. Crazy legs. Real rock saying. Then, okay. Then they said, Charlie Chase, crazy legs, and the real rock saying, if y'all don't stop, are you smoking that damn crack? The real rock saying. This is desperation, guys. The real rock, the real rock saying, a pioneer of hip hop. The Real Roxanne never had a hit record, and The Real Roxanne came around in the, the mid to late 80s. Hip-hop was a decade old by then, over a decade old. The Real Roxanne was not a factor in hip-hop in any shape, form, or fashion. You see what I'm saying? They lowered the bar so damn low. Anybody who was Puerto Rican who was around, they're saying that they're a pioneer. Then they, li they like to go to crazy legs. Whenever they start talking about Latins in hip hop, they, they they play the Crazy Legs card. Crazy Legs, great dancer. I met Crazy Legs in Hawaii one time. Nice guy. Good guy. Not a pioneer. Crazy Legs got things popping in the 80s. Him and the Rocksteady crew, they got things popping in the 80s. Uh, they were doing old dance moves that black folks were doing. Crazy Legs didn't pioneer anything. You see? Black folks, let's stop being afraid to debunk these damn lies. Hold on. So they're giving credit to Prince Marky D of the Fat Boys as a pioneer. Again, Prince Marky D and those dudes came around in the mid to late 80s, and this man was not a pioneer in anything. And I like Prince Marky D. He was a great producer, but he didn't pioneer anything. He just... Happened to be Puerto Rican in the 80s. And they're giving him credit for that. You see? And this is BET doing this nonsense. Hold on. Way for generations of popular future Latin figures of hip hop. Fat Joe quickly became a big deal in hip hop while <clears throat> repping the Latino community. In addition to making moves as an artist and growing a fan base, Joe began to learn the business of music. Around 1995, he signed another Latino rapper by the name of Big Pun. Whether traditional hip hop, Spanish lyrics, or emerging sounds, Latin hip hop occupies a huge space in music globally. The Latin community has been a proud contributor to hip hop for 50 years, and there's no. Oh wow! As of that slowing down anytime soon. They said that the Latin community they've been proud contributors to hip hop for the last 50 years. Where, where? 50 years ago, what were you contributing to hip hop? This is disrespectful, Black family. You better know when you're being disrespected. This is disrespect and it's ethnocide and we have to stop being afraid to call this out. We got Fat Joe running around here. He's been retweeting all of this type of garbage for the all day and he just, he's been really pushing that narrative and it's very disrespectful to foundation of Black American culture. This is why we're doing this documentary and there are real people who have to get credit where credit is due. And they've been trying to erase foundational Black American contributions and creations of hip hop. I posted a clip. Let me, re let me repost this thing. This is from a book. Let me repost something real quick. Let me put it in the jumbotron. Because I've been studying these lies for a long time. What you see in the Jumbotron, that's a, a snippet from a 2016 book called Can't Stop, Won't Stop by author Jeff Chang, who's Asian. Now, Jeff Chang in this book, and I caught this a few years ago because I got a lot of books on hip hop. I study this stuff. He deliberately lied in this book. In this book, he falsely claimed that MC, the first hip hop MC, Coke LaRock, was an immigrant. 
He said Coke LaRock was an immigrant. And this is the line. He said, Herc wanted to summon the same kind of excitement he felt as a pickney down yard, meaning a Jamaican. Along with his immigrant friend, Coke LaRock, he distinguished their crew from the disco DJs by translating the Kingstonian vibe of sound system DJs like Count Machuki, King Stitt, U Roy, and Big Youth for the Bronxies. Okay, that's a lie. That's a damn lie. Number one, Coke LaRock is not an immigrant. That's why they didn't specify where he's supposed to immigrated from. Hold on. That's why they did not specify where Coke LaRock was supposed to have immigrated from. They didn't specify it. That was the reason. They didn't. He just said he was an immigrant and he knew he was lying. That's why he didn't say an immigrant from from where. He was trying to imply that Coke LaRock also immigrated from Jamaica, but he knew it was a lie. That's why he didn't actually say it. He just threw that lie out there and just kind of let it simmer. And then made it uh, a lie by association by associating Count Machuki and all of this Jamaican stuff to Coke LaRock. Coke LaRock's family is from North Carolina. Coke LaRock is not an immigrant. See, they've been planning these lies for a long time to erase FBA culture family. That's very significant. And this whole thing where we got rap from the Jamaican dance hall, that's horse crap, family. No one was listening to no damn dance hall out over here. Cool Herc wasn't playing dance hall nor reggae music. He said that. We weren't listening to Caribbean music at all. We were listening to funk records and we had people rhyming over funk records. Hell, James Brown was rhyming in some of his records, not singing, but rhyming. We had Pigmeat Markham doing records where he's rhyming over beats. We were already doing that in the 1960s and even going before that. We got to get this history straight. We got to get this history straight. So we can, we as Foundation of Black Americans, notice we have receipts. We have receipts. We can prove everything we're saying. We can show you the people who were rhyming. We can show you the people who were FBA who were doing graffiti in the 60s. We can show you people who were FBA from the 40s, 50s, and 60s who were doing breakdown moves on the, on the floor where they were getting on the ground doing different types of spins. We can show you FBAs who were doing that. Notice they can't show us any Jamaicans doing any of that stuff. They can't show you they damn sure can't show Puerto Ricans doing any of it. You see, we got to call the lies out. And let's stop being afraid to call out the lies. There's an effort all across the board right now to create a sense of ethnocide. And there was an article that came out in the Daily Cause by this, this tether, this old woman who's a non-FBA tether. But she named me in the article and she was denigrating Foundation of Black Americans. The article, I put it up on my... Um, Twitter feed, the article says, Caribbean matters, celebrating black Caribbean Americans in the U.S. while combating xenophobia, meaning us telling them to hold their own nuts. All right. So her article goes to say, growing up in New York City, I was exposed early on to the richness and diversity of Caribbean American communities, which was more than likely not the experience of folks from many other parts of the states, meaning Foundation of Black Americans. There was a patchwork quilt of blackness in New York City that had many accents, amazing food, music, and history. I was no stranger to black Latinos, whether from Puerto Rico, Cuba, the Dominican Republic. I knew the difference between Bayesians and those from Trinidad and Tobago or St. Lucia. All right. Like many non-Caribbean folks in New York, meaning Foundation of Black Americans, most likely. When I got older, I made an annual pilgrimage to the West Indian Day Parade in Brooklyn, which was the which was taking place, which is taking place this year on September 5th. I regularly attended lectures at the Caribbean Cultural Center. I say all this because I'm disturbed by a very loud and vocal right wing black American minority who's spending their time on social media attacking Caribbean folks, whether Creole, Spanish, or English speaking, as not black. These people who openly embrace anti-immigrant policies, 
that are rabidly MAGA and they need to be called out by all of us. So she's talking about us, family. She said, now we're right wingers and MAGA. Here they go with that nonsense. So if we if we call out the damn Democrats for crapping on us and prioritizing other people over us, they're running this whole way. Y'all are really MAGA right wingers. This is some um, white supremacist garbage coming from the DNC, by the way, guys. This is some right wing. This is some some DNC nonsense here. This is some DNC nonsense. And here they go. They they name me. Um, Part of this movement is morphed into Foundation of Black Americans, which was founded by Tariq Nasheed, a filmmaker and author of books glorifying pimping. Stop it. He also has a large YouTube following and uh, online following. And then they keep talking about MAGA, MAGA, MAGA. When you hear all of that, well, he wrote some pimp books. That's coming from the DNC. That's supposed to be their shaming tactic, which I've... I've never written pimp books. My book, The Art of Mackin, wasn't a pimp book, and everybody knows it. That's why that law, that lie falls flat. But this is them trying their shaming tactics now. And they put out a lot of garbage about me. You see lately some of the rumors and lies that's put out by the feds and the white DNC and Every other week, they got some crazy video about me talking about my street past, and they always have to over-exaggerate it. According to them, if you listen to some of the, the rumors and lies that these people put about me, I was a drug-dealing, murdering gangbanger with a whole bunch of hoes with an international crime ring back in the day. If you listen to them, I done murdered all types of people. I done caught all types of bodies, nigga. If you listen to them, I'm fucking Dolomite. The shit that they talk about, it sounds like a Dolomite movie. Like I'm driving around. I was back in the day in a Cadillac. Where's my money, bitches? I kill you, job sucker. You rat suit eating motherfucker. I was Dolomite, according to these people. Like, damn, I done got all these bodies and had all of these kilos of cocaine. <laughs> Good Lord. I was walking around in bell-bottom jumpsuits and the fuck out of here. So this is them trying to discredit me because so many people listen to what I say because I'm going to tell the truth. So they're trying to get in front of this thing early to try to say, okay, don't listen to him. Don't listen to the drug dealing murderer. Don't listen to him. He done murdered people. And he done made a deal with the CIA. It, it gets all types of, it gets real crazy with the conspiracies. But the thing is, man, listen, these folks are mad at us as Foundation of Black Americans. And, and this article is very interesting. They want to celebrate Caribbean culture in America. But when we say, OK, we want to celebrate our Foundation of Black American culture, well, damn it, we're divisive and MAGA. When we want to celebrate our damn history, which is unique, we're MAGA and xenophobic. Kiss my ass. Because these folks are projecting. They are projecting. They're projecting the, the xenophobia and the anti-FBA hatred that they've had for decades. They have always, always, since the 70s, come over here and had this whole jealous-ass um, anti-FBA mentality where you want to come over and leech off of us and then say, well, we need to stay away from them and don't share nothing with them. They've always had this hatred of us. Too many of them has. That's, that's the long and short of it. And anything positive that they do, they make sure we don't get credit for it. They've been doing that. They have been doing that. It's never xenophobic when they do that. But when your criminal class goes out here and does all of this rah-rah filth, y'all want to dump them on us. And we're saying, no, we do not want you to dump your damn filth on us. See, that was, that's the big problem, guys. That is the main issue that they really have. We don't let them dump filth on us anymore. So whenever we see these crimes that go on, we make sure, hey, that nigga ain't FBA, by the way. Hey, the dude who just raped all them women, hey, by the way, he ain't FBA. That woman in Atlanta that shot up all them people, yeah, she's from Cameroon. She ain't FBA. We're not letting you dump your garbage on us no more. And they have a problem with that. Because, see, they've been, th there's this little perverted game that they've been playing where anything positive, they become a doctor, I'm a, 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 a Belizean American doctor. I'm a Nigerian American PhD and all the criminals just get to be black and they sit up here and nudge and wink each other while we have to take the brunt of the filth that comes from their cultures. 
the filth gets dumped on us. It just becomes black. And we're stopping that. And now they have to own up to their filth, just like we do. We have FBA criminals or whatever. We got to take responsibility for that. That that gets put on our resume. Put your criminals on your resume. I don't want foreign criminals sitting up here misrepresenting me. I don't want to be responsible for criminals from other places. And the minute y'all do something positive, now nah, I can't get credit for that. That's all about your foreign ingenuity that helped you get your PhD or whatever you got. I don't want to play that game and I'm not playing that game. We're making everybody hold their own nuts and we're gatekeeping all of the cultures that we're creating. And we're putting everything on the FBA resume now. And the FBA resume is full of positive contributions. And that's the problem. Now that we're filling that FBA resume up, a lot of these other resumes are looking real flimsy. That's why they're trying to tether on to our damn hip hop culture so badly. That's why they're trying to use twists and, and bends of logic to tether themselves onto that because their resume is looking real funny now. Now that we're differentiating our lineage from theirs. And when we do that, it becomes where we all black, brother. Ain't we all black? No. No, we're not because you specified that we are not all black. We are not all black because y'all were the main ones coming over here. Like, I'm not black. I'm Nigerian. I'm not black. I'm Ghanaian. I'm not black. I'm Ugandan. I'm not black. I'm Dominican. Y'all been doing that for the last three decades. And when we say, okay, well, you go ahead and do you and we're FBA. Yeah, we're different. Hey, 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 wait, nigga. Wait, 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 wait. We, we, we are the same niggas. Aren't we all the same niggas? We're black. If the white man saw you, he would not know the difference between blah, blah, blah. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Let me get some people in here, man. <laughs> Let me get some of the family in here. We got how many folks we got? Oh, man, we got a lot of folks in here. Let's get Brother Sage in here. Let's get Sage in. What's up, Brother Sage? Sage, what's up, brother? Brother Flex, how's everything going? How's Quo Quo? How's Peanut? How's the family? Oh, yeah, the baby's fine. Everybody's good, man. Thank you so much. Good to hear that, brother. I wanted to say this. I wanted to touch on this. Being a kid from Brooklyn, New York, again, um, even in New York itself, New York is very segregated with the um, the Caribbeans living in a certain spot. Yes. The foundation is living in a certain spot. Puerto Ricans live over here. Dominicans live over here. We don't live together in New York. That's a Real big talk. It's still segregated. Real talk. Right now, it's segregated it's, right yes. now. Yes, sir. But I wanted to say this too, for all the people, we are, and I'm so proud of the family, Brother Flex, you got us all up on code. We have to push back against this because they're trying to steal our culture. What I would ask the family to do is basically like this. If you're mad at these people that's already bought off, these artists that's big, that's already bought off, help out the grassroots artists trying to come up that's preaching your message. Retweet them. Stream their music. It's nothing to do that. It's nothing to help them. That way they can push your agenda. The same way like, you know, um, our brother Flex. Our brother Flex is strong because of us. So again, help these young artists coming up. Don't support the people that's already, you know, don't support the fakes. Support the real that that um, support you. And again, stay on code, brothers. Um, with that, I digress. Thank you so much, brother. There's Brother Sage in here. All right, let's get... Um... Was this brother? I what's this name? Icon Beats. What's up, Icon Flex? What, what up, Flex? What's up, FBA family? You know we got the what's FBA up? soil in us. You know what I mean? What's happening? But you know, uh, I noticed a lot of the cultural appropriation going on, and you know, I've been in the I've been in the music uh you know quite a long time. So, um, and I noticed it with a lot with artists. I'll be having to artists that I engineer for it who's not of our ethnicity, I'll be having to tell them like, You sure you wanna say that? Like when they when they drop the end bomb in the booth, you know, I'll be like, You sure you wanna say that? <laughs> like Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like and uh yeah. like, I just wanted to say to Reek, man, me and my moms and my pops, man, we all we are fans of your work, bro. Keep the fight going. I'm building my platform so I can join you. So you know I could be of the same influence as you, bro. Like keep that shit going, bro. Please, no doubt, man. Much respect to you, brother. Let me get um black immigrants in here. Black immigrants. 
What's up, Tyreek, brother? And, you know, combating ethnocide, because at the end of the day, what I'm seeing from a lot of immigrants, especially black immigrants, is that they have an obsession with trying to erase us. Now, yeah. brother, Ty yeah. brother, brother Tyreek, I want to let you know this. I'm glad that you I'm glad that you are speaking about the things that are going on. You're the only person on Twitter who has over 300,000 followers speaking about this issue. But, brother, let me tell you this right now. Let me tell you this because we talked before on here. We have we, we have to remember this. Afri in Africa, they're even trying to stop each other from getting ethnocide against another tribe. And they're, mm. bringing that, they're bringing that tribalism over here just like the Caribbeans. In Florida, the Haitians and Jamaicans don't get along. But right. let, me, let, right. let, let, me tell you, let me tell you this. They always focus on us. They don't never focus on the beefs they have with each other. Like, for instance, Nigerians. Nigerians come for us. But if you look at Nigeria, you got tribes exterminating each other. They fight each other. Look yeah. at East Africa. You Somalians. Somalians got names for us. But in Somalia, the clans be the clans fight each other. The clans kill each other. So, you know, it pisses me off how everybody focus on our issues, but not their issues. Our yeah. issues ain't our issues ain't shit compared to their issues. But before but before I go back to as a listener, this is all I'm gonna say. If they're having genocides with each other in Africa, if they killing each other in Africa, we ain't no exception. These people wish they could do that to us. Thank you, brother yeah. Tyreek. Peace out. Much, much respect. Real talk, man. I know they they have so much real beef with each other in the Caribbean. They be getting busy with each other in the Caribbean and Africa. They have real beef, like real genocide. And they don't do anything to fix that. But the minute we're not killing them, we're not even hostile towards them. All we're saying is, hey, man, you know, we're going to kind of focus on getting tangibles for our lineage right now. We're just going to let you do you. That is xenophobic, nigga. You hate me. Why do you hate me? Like, me letting you do your own thing equals us hating you. That's that's their argument. They can't say that we're doing anything. to. We're not doing anything to them. We don't wish harm. We're not harming you. It's not even practical for us to do that. We don't even think like that. We're just telling you to do you. Do your own thing. Do, fight for yourself. Go ahead and get things popping on your own because we got things that we have to get covered over here with our lineage. And right there, that's the equivalent of genocide. Oh, no, you niggas are so... That is violence to me. You niggas are violent. Lord. What's up, Just Cakes? Hop on, dear. Hey, what's up, Tariq? How are you, beloved? Uh, I'm good. Uh, I was just uh, commenting on the um, title pretty much. They always said free smoke for us, and it's just finally we on the same page. Just We we on the same page with them. Uh, yeah. I remember when I was little, I didn't realize that Africans hated us so much until I actually had to get service from them. And then you realize that they in the hospitals and everything else, Africans and Caribbean. So it's just like... Uh, we just returning the favor. You can't cry foul because we on the same page you on. And I'll just leave it there. Thank you. Much respect, sis. Much respect to you. Let me get let me get um Black Alpha Network on here. Let me get Black Alpha, then I'm gonna get Great Black Shark on after Black Network. Hop on, brother. Yes, sir. How are you, brother? I wanna say salute to you, brother, for really stepping up. I feel you the one who's really qualified to really maintain and regulate this nonsense that they got going on with hip hop culture. And I want to, yeah. I want to tell the family this, the importance of this documentary you're making, which I'm very excited for is I noticed the dominant society in these tethers, they want to go around the 30 and up crowd because we were there. We, we know what was happening. Yeah. We got receipts. Yeah. You know, you know, nowadays with all they want to get to the 15 year olds. Fat Joe wasn't saying this 20 years ago. Cause he had to deal with us. Uh, Buster Ryan, right. you feel me? Buster wasn't saying this. He says it now. Cause they talking to the little Uzi Vert audience. They don't want to come at us, you know, who are up there. So I'm excited for the documentary brother. And I salute you, man. Cause they don't make these documentaries. I remember the show in the nineties, they made these things that regulated it. Now there isn't. So salute to you fam. Much respect. And my brother made a very good point. No, they're doing it now. Joe and Buster were not doing and Joe and Buster, they've been around since the 90s. Joe and Buster, they've been around since the 90s. They know what they're saying is not true. And they knew they could not say that back in the day because people in the industry would have checked them then. But see, here's the thing. A lot of people who were around 
in the early days of hip hop, a lot of them are dead guys. Hip hop, you know, has been and you know, it's like a, something that's been around for fifty years. So a lot of those guys who were there in the early days, a lot of them died. Some of them are still alive. That's who we're going to get for this new documentary. But a lot of them are have died, and a lot of them are about to die. So what they're doing, they're getting these lies in early. They're getting the lie. They're getting the lies in. So when a lot of these old schoolers who were there in the beginning when they die. So now they've already planted the seed for this bogus narrative and they're going to double down on the lies then, but they're waiting on them to go ahead and die on off so that they can just lie, just full throttle with the damn lies. You then? Now we got a Puerto Rican on here, the Puerto Rican rapper phase. Me and him had a rap battle. Now phase He's a low-key troll, and I'm not going to let him troll too long. You better bring some facts, FaZe, and no trolling. I'm not going to let you troll at all. You're not going to babble in time waste. You better come with some damn receipts, FaZe, right now, real quick. Hop on and turn your mic on. You are not going to get in here and start time wasting. Because he's another, this is another Puerto Rican who be trying to act like, they contributed to hip hop and they created it and they didn't. And he knows it. Get your ass in here <clears throat> so I can sprinkle some Goya on you. Come on in here. Turn your microphone on. Turn that microphone on. All right. I'm waiting. On, he, he bounced. Oh, why'd you bounce, dude? He got up out of here. All right. Now he bounced. He got up out the thing. Yeah, he know. He got up out. He got up out of here. All right. He bounced. Let's get Great Black Shark in here. What's going on with you, Black Man? Salute to you. Much respect. How you doing, fam? I'm grand, man. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm coming in off of that last word that you said, bounce. Because see, it's it's high time for us to start looking at the entirety of our culture as a house. And when you are in someone else's house and you misbehave, it's time to bounce your ass up out the house. It's yep. time for a lot of these guys to go. And the way that we do that is, I don't care if it's Fat Joe, Buster Rhymes, Takashi, whoever it is is coming out here disrespecting our culture like that. We, as foundational black Americans, have the power to delegitimize them and just say, hey, look, I don't care how many rhymes you put together. That's not hip hop anymore. You are not a guest in our culture anymore when you disrespect it. Get out. We have the power to stop that immediately. All of us can get on code and do that. We take that, that street cred, social cred away from them. And the other thing that I want to say before I land real quick is this. When it comes to the point that you were making about them dumping our trash on us, these other different groups. Yeah. Historically, black has been dirtied by the media these white supremacists and now these buffer class groups. And unfortunately, some Caribbean and continental Africans have come over here and joined in that. Yep. It's time for us to clean that up from within. And we do that by having self-respect for our culture. And one of the most powerful words when it comes to having respect for yourself is no. And collectively, we are going to say no to that across the board. And as far as these politicians on either side of the aisle, Black is not going to be the backroom dirty word, word anymore. You're either yeah. going to deal with us up front. If you want a, a vote from a black person, you have to be willing to bring proof of concept tangibles to us first before you even get a vote. With that said, I'll land my plan, brother. Thank you so much, brother. Real talk. Yeah, we, we got to do some house cleaning, man. We got to do some house cleaning. And like I said, we got to start putting things back on the FBA resume because we created so much stuff and we've sat here and shared it with everybody to the point where they are erasing our culture and us. We've been sharing too much stuff. And that's a part of our culture, really. Our culture is creating stuff and sharing it with everybody. That's a gift and a curse that has made us, um, that has ingratiated us to a lot of different groups, but it has also made us vulnerable because people can come in, we sit them down and invite them to the table, to the barbecue, and if they do what we do, we'll say, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll say that you were a pioneer too. I mean, we're all family. We treat everybody like family, but we got to understand everybody ain't going to act like family, man. Or you might have family members who ain't worth a damn. Just because somebody's your family doesn't mean that they're good. You understand? You got some janky so-called family members out here that you need to keep away from the damn barbecue. 
and we didn't sat here and played this family game with everybody, and then we wonder where the VCR went. We wonder where the the microwave went. Because the family member then took it and pawned it and smoked it up. You, you, you see what I'm saying? We got these little crackhead type of relationships with folks where we invite them in and they come up and smoke up all of them, uh, the appliances and all the furniture. And we still like, oh, that's still family. I know he, I know, just leave him alone. Just leave him alone. We know he own that stuff. But he's still family. You know, we got that bullshit in our society. That forgiven, and you know, we know somebody and he's down bad, but the Lord is gonna help him. We got that. That's that old church shit that black folks need to shake. That's why we let all types of riff raffs come up in church and, and give their testimony. And give honor to God. I was on the pipe, I was on crack, and I was giving blowjobs behind the Winn Dixie grocery store for 15 years. And I got a vision of Jesus, and I got off my knees sucking and started getting on my knee praying. Yes, Lord. We, we got that perverted stuff that we let go on. And we let all types of riffraffs come around and redeem themselves. Let's stop that, man. I'm tired of riffraffs coming around us pillaging off of our culture. Let's gatekeep the hell out this thing. Let's gatekeep it. We got to gatekeep our culture, man. Well, we got a lot of folks in here. A lot of people. And how many people we got in here? Boy, we in here. We almost got 1,500 people in here. We in here deep. And um, by the way, while we got, got all these people in here, y'all need to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. That's Tariq Radio. Tariq Radio is my YouTube channel. Everybody needs to be subscribing to my YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, and by the way, we're going to have some updates on the museum coming soon. Hopefully next week I'm going to have everybody, I'm going to give everybody some updates on it. We're closing on a building right now, and we're just doing a lot of little technical back and forth stuff. If you know anything about commercial properties, um, there's a lot of little stuff, insurance stuff and stuff with the escrow company and just a bunch of paperwork going back and forth. So we're about to acquire this building very, very soon. And then we're going to get started on the little minor renovations and then the curation. So um, we're, we're looking good right now. I'm going to keep everybody posted on what's going on with the museum possibly next week. I'll let y'all know what's going on with that. The Hidden History Museum. Let's get uh, my brother Afro Elite on here. Afro Elite, what's going on, brother? Afro Elite, where you at, brother? Yes, sir. What's going okay. on? Okay. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. What's okay, I'm going to say this: the subject of hip-hop and the erasure of foundational black Americans' creation of hip-hop is a lot more important than people think it is because they're not just yeah. trying to erase hip-hop. They're pretty much trying to erase our culture and our contributions to the world because they don't only say that black... Um, it was Caribbeans and whoever who invented hip hop that that will lead to it wasn't black Americans who built this country as well too. all of our contributions to the world. They try to um, say it was somebody else who did it. Even the ending of slavery. I've heard that one woman who said uh, it was from 1804 and it was Haitians who really ended slavery. Right. They do that with all of the things that foundation black Americans contribute. And the thing, the dangerous part about that is, is, that when you erase somebody's cult, um, contributions to the world and you erase their culture, you're pretty much saying that that group of people don't matter. That if that group of people right. got erased, it wouldn't make a difference. So it's very important that we stand firm on our culture and we acknowledge what we've contributed to the world because they're trying to take Real their, when you erase the culture, you can erase the people. Real talk. And they do that same thing. Remember, they were doing that same thing with the railroad, saying, well, it was the Asians who came over and built the railroads. And they ex they expanded what was already built. It was black people. It was foundational black Americans who were building all the railroads in the South and on the East Coast. Hell, there's documents. If you And these documents are online. These railroad companies actually own foundational black Americans. They would own the railroad companies themselves owned black folks. 
And it was black people building these railroad systems, digging the, the initial ditches and laying the tracks and putting everything together. And it was even some foundational black Americans who were the architects of some of these train bridges, like our brother Horace King, look him up. He was a foundational black American who was enslaved, who was actually an architect. So we weren't just the labor, we were the people creating some of the architect, you understand, our architecture. We better get this damn history right. We better, because white society ain't gonna tell us this stuff. They're going to do everything they can to act like we were insignificant. It is up to us to put this stuff together. That's why they're so mad at me. I done put out the Hidden Color series and put out so many truths that has that just changed the whole game. That created a whole woke movement. That's why there's a anti-woke movement right now. You notice that? They're running around here talking about we got to stop the woke. These niggas are just too damn woke. They're too woke. We got to stop it in schools. We can't have these niggas teaching the truth in schools. Come on now. We're a country of white supremacist lies. We got to spread these lies and we got these woke niggas out here. We got to do something. You see, let's get um, um, Donnell Kearney. Boy, that's a black name right there. Donnell Kearney. Brother Donnell, turn your microphone on, sir. Oh, what's going on, man? I just want to say, man, you're very interesting, man. I believe everything you say. Um, and I'm just here for the comments, man, just to learn more. That's all I got to say, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. God bless. Thank you. Much respect, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, let's get um, Hayden. Let's get Hayden in here. Let's get Hayden. Let's get Hayden in here. Oh, and let's get, um, we're going to get Invincible Dumega. We're going to get him in next. Hayden, hail Neil Hayden. All right, Neil, we'll get you later. You're not saying nothing, so let's get um, the Invincible. Where you at, brother? I'm here. You hear me, Tariq? There you go, man. What's on your mind, oh, man? Shout-out to Tariq. Shout-out to the FBA family. Shout-out to that sister, Tez. Uh, brother, you are so right. I'm out here in New York, and listen, that video that you post up earlier about the young man that was talking about the breakdancing, people pay attention to that very very specifically a lot of the elders are out there in bronxdale and river and, and, and bronx river projects and they talk in the business and those are the young gangsters that were out there in the early 60s and the 70s and they fathered a lot of that and remember that cool hurt even though a lot of times that you know it, it you know they like to say hurt uh um flash uh, and um, you know, and bam, yeah, they try to say that you know what they fathered that they fathered everything. Remember, it wasn't even called hip hop then at that time. They just called it the right. merry go round. You dig the hip hop thing? Yeah, exactly. What 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 it, what it was was you know that was in a rhyme. That was actually in a rhyme. And in that Jeff Chang book that the Tariq is talking about, that is so strong. That is so accurate. Yo, that brother right there was just being disrespectful. So, again, yeah. the only reason that they raising up on the FBA nation and the only reason they raising up on Tariq is because they know, they know without a shadow of a doubt that there's a lot of things amiss there. It's so disappointing to see Buster Rhymes and Fat Joe do the things that they did. When they came in, they know who they came under. They know Fat Joe came under DITC digging in the crates. If anybody know about yep. that, so yeah, what finessing them do? Yeah, mm -hmm. so they know the culture. They know it. They fully are aware of it. And we might have to. We're gonna have to start disengaging from a lot of them. They almost. It almost seemed like they. They are trying to like bait us into having this type of confrontation with them because it was a young sister on your chat on your page. That uh, I think it was Debbie D. She tried to like come at you, it, it, it kind of in a weird way. It was like she could have just you know DM you and had that conversation. She didn't have to do it. It wasn't it wasn't bad though. She was just like, yeah, I'm one of the pioneers. No, she was she didn't really. Come, she was like, come yeah, you want, come holler at me. Come on, bro. It was, <laughs> it was like she didn't have to do that. It was like you know what, y'all can have a mutual discussion and maybe y'all can exchange ideas. But the way that she did it was like you know that. It, that that's peculiar. Like they almost seem like they want to isolate it. So again, remember, Karis One, Bam, Grand Wizard Theodore, Crazy Legs. Y'all gotta watch them very closely. They look. They are almost streamlining 
the way that hip hop started. You got to be careful with the wordplay that those four are playing around. And remember, Cool Herc don't even tell y'all he created hip hop. That's, right, he never say that. He never he, said that. He knows that. not to say that. Right, he just, right. He said he had he had he said he came over and he said he used to see the young guys used to do all the dance moves outside in the park. Then he started doing this thing. And he started isolating the breaks, and when he started isolating the breaks, that's when he called it the merry-go-round. So be wary right. of that. Yo, I'm gonna yield my time. Right. Blessings to you, Tariq, and the family. Blessings to you and your family. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you, brother. Let me get my brother. Let me get um. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. A lot of stuff I got going on here. Hold on. Let's get brother Sir Major in here. Let's get Sir Major in the building. Oh, what happened to Sir Major? Well, I added Sir Major and he disappeared. I don't know what happened to you. Yeah, sir. yeah. What's good, man? So hey, uh, listen. Okay, there you go. There I know you you're working on go a ahead. documentary. I think it's fantastic. It couldn't have come in a better time. Uh, I'm reaching out to some folks in the back end. I just want to toss out a few names, see what you think. What do you think about getting Tip uh, to kind of speak uh, in support of the DVD uh, and or the documentary and um, some other folks like T. Neal, uh, Tony Neal from the Core DJ CEO? Yeah, I'm down with that. Okay, I'm definitely down. Uh, I'll shoot you their yeah. contact. I already, already uh, just sent them some messages to see what the, see how they feel about it. But I definitely think Tony Neal, the CEO of the Core DJs, uh, a Black American from Wisconsin, a big time DJ, and also Rick Party. I can uh, reach out to him and have them also be a part of this project. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hit me up and let me know what they I got say. You. I'm yeah, I'm down. I got you. Thank you, brother. All right. Let's get, um, we got a lot of folks in here. Let's get Melrose in here. What's up, Melrose? Melrose. Let's get Melrose in here. Peace, family. Am I coming through loud and clear? You are, man. How are you, All's sir? All's well. Great to speak with you. So, yeah, um, my name is Mike, and I'm from the Bronx. And Fat Joe, he just opened a brand new clothing store three blocks away from where I live. So I go by the saying, if you can't do the most, the least you can do is the least. So the least I can do is I'm going to hold some demonstrations outside of his store. And then eventually some of the employees, they'll inquire, hey, what's going on? And I'll tell them that I need to speak with Joe and then we'll take it from there. There you go, my man. All right, brother. That's what it and is. Thank also, you so much. For oh, oh, brother, I took you off the thing, brother. My bad. All right, let me get, um, we got a lot of folks in here. Let's get, um, well, we got a lot of folks in here. How many folks we got in here? All right, let's do almost 1,500. We are in here heavy. We are in here heavy. Let's get um, Omizi. Let me get some new faces I've not seen. Omizi. Let's get Omizi in here. Tariq, what's up, man? It's a pleasure to speak with you, bro. Thank you. My man, how are you, sir? Oh, man, it's an honor, man. Thank you. I just want to, real quick, I just wanted to um, see if you were familiar with Crump Clown Dancing in uh, L.A. Oh, Lord, what, what did he do? No, I mean, um, you know, are you familiar with, like, Clown Dancing, like, Crump? Oh, yeah, the dancing, yeah, talking about Tommy, Tommy the, clown? the Clown? yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah, okay. I thought you meant I thought you meant that um attorney Benjamin Crump was clowning in oh, LA. No. That's what I thought you. Oh, but no, but uh, yeah, I know about Tommy the Crown and Crump. And what okay, about? Okay, yeah. So man, long time, like around two thousand and three, I got really into it. Man, when I used to drive out to. I'm from Pasadena. I used to drive out to Compton yeah. every day after high school. And um, bro, like it. I, what you're saying goes right along with it. It died down, and then to this day. Asians across overseas are teaching classes. They, um, it's people in Europe. It's um, all type of other ethnicities. They just, they got it now. And then like the people, yeah, oh, the yeah. people who created it, the people who created it um, are like working in warehouses now. And these are genius. Yeah. These are genius. I, I live in Pasadena. So I was right there by Hollywood. So when I used to go out there and dance, people from, top-notch millennium, millennium dance classes, they used to bow down. They used to bow down to me, give me offers and everything. I wouldn't do it because I knew the creators weren't out there yet. And so as soon as that movie came out, Rise, that's when um, everybody gobbled it up. And now it's not even ours no more. It's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing, man. You know what? There's another crew, those Jabberwocky guys. You know about those guys? The Jabberwockies, yeah, yeah. these Asian yeah. 
Yeah, you know, they they got um I was up in Vegas, they got like shows in Vegas, just big huge shows in Vegas. I don't know how they do that. They capital I don't know, it, it it blows my mind how they capitalize off of what we do. And it's so recent, it's but not even old. Let um Yeah, yeah. Thank for the call. But we let them, we let them, we let them do all this stuff. And going back to the Jabberwockies, and they they're good. These these guys can dance. And there's some Asian dudes. I, I think they're Asian. I, I, either Latino or Asian, but I think they're Asian, the Jabberwockies. But basically what they do is what a group in the Bay Area was doing back in the damn 70s called Demons of the Mind. There was a group in, in the 70s in the Bay, where my older Bay Area people, y'all know who I'm talking about. It was one of the pioneering groups that people don't even know about right now. People don't even know about Demons of the Mind. These brothers were doing, they would wear costumes and sometimes these masks and they would do these choreographed moves, almost robotics style. And you can look at the Jabberwockies and see that the demons of the mind, these brothers out of the Bay, in directly influenced a lot of the stuff that they do. You see, anytime you see some people doing some hip hop, I can go and show you the foundation of black Americans who pioneered it. I can show you exactly the foundation of black Americans who pioneered these styles. You think? But you never hear about them. Because the dominant society wants to erase them. They're not going to big them up. That's why it's up to us. That is why it's up to us for us to teach that history, family. All right, let me see. Let's get a couple of more folks in here because I don't want to be on here too, too long. We got a lot of folks in here. Shout out to you guys, man. We are in here heavy. And again, y'all need to be subscribed to my YouTube channel. Let's get um, Ali Stair Fennell. We'll get him in here. Ali Stair, hop on. Then I'm going to get my brother Dwan B in here. And Dwan, hold on. Ali Stair, hop on, brother. Come on, Ali. You had your hand up. Ali, turn your microphone on, man. You got five seconds, brother. Ali, turn your microphone on. Can you hear me now? People raise hey, their hey, hand. There you hey, go. Hey, what's going on, brother? How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Listen, I'm not going to be too long, but I'm glad you're doing this documentary because for generations, you know, black people, we've created blues, jazz, and every time we share our music and everything else, we use, we lose a lot of generational wealth because of that. There's yes. been so many black artists from back in the 20s, 30s, we sh we they hear us on, on our on radio stations, but then some of these white music executives hear us and they give it to the white singers who can sing okay and everything else. They get the credit while all these black singers who are singing, you know, in the background in some of these radio stations, they end up dying penniless because of it. Real talk, and that's a major problem. We they're not going to big up these people, man. It's up to us to say, hey, these are the legends that we learn from. We have to keep these people alive. Some of these dancers that B-Boys were influenced by, um, Connor Buckner, a.k.a. Little Buck, Peg Leg Bates and the Nicholas Brothers and all of these dancers from the 40s and 50s and 60s who were phenomenal dancers doing floor work which in, inspired the B-Boys, we need to know who these people are. I don't want to hear about some unknown, make-believe Puerto Rican who didn't exist contributing to hip-hop in the 70s. I'm not going to sit here and let them give prop to somebody who didn't damn exist when you have all of these pioneers who were there influencing the culture that you won't even talk about. Let's get my brother Dwan B in here. Now, Dwan, you know you're going to have to be in the new documentary, right? I'm definitely going to be in that, man. Just call me. I'll be ready. No doubt. What's on your mind, brother? Man, that's why you, you hit on something when you talk about the dancers. I was, because my, what I like to influence and uh, bring out are the composers and arrangers that put together our music and R&B and jazz that hip hop eventually ended up sampling. Like, it's almost like we take it for granted, the orchestration, a song like yeah. the Heart Point Five, the Heart Point, uh, the Heart uh, Part Five by Kendrick. We take for granted Leon Ware's orchestration. When you just sit back and listen to the violins, when you listen to the horns, the, 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 the harmonies, these were Mozart-level compositions. And these people, Gene Page, uh, Paul Reiser, James Carmichael, these are people that we don't even know, but their compositions are on the level of Mozart. 
And when you speak to these people, they weren't looking into Jamaica and the Caribbean to get their sound. These cats come from the church. Yes. And that's a relationship between the church and R&B. And one thing about the church, like I was talking to my father-in-law, Mr. Carmichael, when he was still composing Brick House and Zoom for the Commodores, when he was putting all that to get music together for Michael Jackson, he still put music together for the church. And he yeah. didn't even let people in church know that he was doing some of that stuff because, you know, even though he was a Grammy-winning artist, you know, you still don't want to put it out there in the church because the church is so conservative. So when other people want to claim my music, it's like, look, if these people came up in church, they could, you, it was, it's not part of church culture to look anywhere outside of church for his inspiration. Right. So Got to make sure we key in on. Yes, sir. Much respect to you, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, but this, I'm, I'm offended, man. This whole thing, this lie that we got hip hop culture from some damn Jamaica, which we were not listening to Jamaican records. We weren't listening to Jamaican records back then. Why would we have to go to some Jamaican records when we got the Ohio players, James Brown, Sly and the Family Stone? Man, we got all the uh, um, Brass Construction, BT Express. Um, man, we, we had Funkadelic at the time. Funkadelic, remember, they were around in the early 70s. We had all of these funky influences there. Why would we have to look to Jamaica? And we weren't even playing music that slow like that. That was too slow for us. Man, <clears throat> but I can't wait for this documentary, man. I, I'm going to prioritize that. We really got to get this history straight. We really got to get it straight and look to see more slander interviews about me as I go into making this documentary. Because they already, you know, we got the American Maroon movie coming out, so they're already starting with the slander. So you're about to hear a whole bunch of Dolomite stories about me and all of the people I've allegedly murdered and all the kilos of cocaine I was transporting all around the world in the 90s, according to the FBI shills and the CIA trolls. Yeah, I was... I was Ron O'Neill back in the damn day. But anyway, we're going to keep on pushing, man. It, we, it's up to the foundation of black American family to spread the truth, to speak the truth, and to debunk these lies. It is not, these are not innocent lies, family. These people are telling these lies hard body like this for a reason. And the name of the game is to erase you. They want to erase you, family. And we have to stop that. And we have to check these folks. Anyway, y'all, man, much respect to the FBA family. I hope everybody has a productive week. I might be on tomorrow again, so you guys...